Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Sorry, my back's to you guys while I teach today, but I need to see this today. Otherwise, it won't be very helpful. So this is our little tips and tricks and jockey slide. So I'm already logged in just to make things uh, a little easier. Yep. So just so you guys know, this is not a beginner how to use DocuSign class. It's not a crazy advanced class. This is more of an intermediate level. So what Janine is going to do is give you her tips and tricks that she uses to keep DocuSign organized. So when you're working with multiple offers, you can keep all those not accepted offers in one spot, utilizing folders. We'll touch on templates. Um, there's just lots and other little things when writing things and adjusting things in the signature spots too. Fun little, fun little things. How to hide the duck, how to hide something on a document and write over it. That's always a good thing. Um, so yeah, so we'll start. So I know somebody did ask about templates. So I just kind of want to start after I logged in. I go to rooms, which you would go by your face, and you know, you would choose switch to rooms, and then this is where you would normally see the dashboard. But I clicked on my documents. So in templates and how to create templates. Um, you would go into my documents, you're going to scroll down and you're going to choose form and templates, templates and hit apply. These are all my templates in here. And you would just click on this to do new template. You click on it, new template, find the library it's in, whether it's NJ, Hudson, Garden. I don't know why I still have Louisiana forms in here. I need to get that out of there. Um, I'm not associated with these now, but this is where they are. Then you'll be able to pull them in and go from there. But there is on my website, if I'm correct, hold on, let me just do a double check. A, oops, www.leverage.net. You do want to fully learn how to do your templates. Go to resources and trainings. And I'm pretty sure we have them on here. I hopefully I'm not making a liar out of myself right now. I think we added it. No, we didn't. Okay, I gotta get it on here. I will make sure it's on here by end of day today, but here's all other trainings that are done between me and Amanda. That's why it's taking forever to load. This is the listing class, command to DocuSign, command to DocuSign for buyers, how to enter your commissions, the documents and what they're all about. Uh, how to archive an opportunity. That's a little three minute video. How command and DocuSign work together. This is about a 40 minute video. And then I'm going to get the template class in here also on how to create templates. I didn't realize we didn't have it in here yet. I think I have to get it from Amanda first. And then I'll have Lily upload that. So just go to your kwleverage.net resources, trainings, and classes. And then you can find a lot of stuff on here. So anyway, back to DocuSign. I'm going to cancel on this. And I'm going to go back to rooms. Um, I have a fake listing in here, which is awesome. So I'm just going to go to this random room that I have, and I'm going to click on my documents. So when you have your documents, they're all in here, right? You know, everybody gets them pulled in. You, you send them out for signature. Um, I'm going to send some of this stuff for signature really fast, even though it's not fully required. I'm just going to get like one or two documents that I'm going to send myself to make it easier. Um, I don't care about you. Anything that I can tag quickly. Well, what just happened there? That was weird. All right, I'm just clicking on a few documents that are easily. No, you're not easily tagged. You are though. Listing agents, and I'm going to send them to myself for signature, just so we have signed documents in here to make it easier. Here's actually the first trick. I'm going to show you something. If you have something written on a form and you need to hide it um or adjust it or go over it like a listing date's been changed all of a sudden somebody needs to change a listing date from one you downloaded on the mls and brought in oh, there that was weird so let's just say you have a doc, any sort of document that you just need to change wording on you're going to come over to this text and there's a line so for fun i'm just going to do this i'm just going to bring it over this box so you can see Draw a line as big as you need it. All right, it's showing as a red fabulous line. You're gonna to come to the right, you're gonna choose thickness and you're gonna make it really big so it hides it. Then you're gonna choose color and then you're gonna go to white. And now you hit what was there. So now you need to put something over this. You had to put something over it. So what you do is you go up to your text box 
and your text box here. Make it as big as it, whatever it is. You're not doing this on a lead paint form. This is just any document. It's a little neat little trick. Um, and then you can just write whatever it is you need to write in here. Um, with the commission wording. I don't know what it might be. Changing numbers, but you can write it. And you'll do this. I'm just putting jibber jabber in there. And then when you send it for signature, what was underneath it is no longer shown. So that's always a fun little thing, especially like I said, on a listing document. You wrote up your listing document on the MLS, you downloaded it, brought it in, but now your seller tells you after you did this that they want to change their listing dates. You can put that line right over it in the text box and your listing dates to it. So this way, before you send it for signature, dates are already edited on that particular document. Wow. And you don't have to go back in and adjust things. And you can also do the text box in this section. I mean, do the text box in the pre-fill tools. It doesn't um, automatically make it a required document that someone has to fill out. You can actually leave it blank in the signature section here. Um, I don't have more than one people. We'll come back into an envelope, but I'm going to go through it really fast. And I'm just going to send this in for signature just so I can show you some other little things in the rooms. So we have a signed document. Hope everyone had a great holiday weekend. Yeah, it's not great. Did you do anything? I went to Kevney. I think it would be better. I don't see it. It's not scary. May? Oh, Kevney is beautiful. Long drive, but it was the tip of the tip of the peninsula. I know it's a big holiday between Passover, Easter, Ramadan. I think it's once every no, three times, two or three times a century that it happens that they all fall together. Oh. Mm -hmm like that overlapping. All right, I'm just going to go in and sign these documents just so we have some sort of signature documents to work with. And yes, that is my scribble scrabble. That's actually my signature. Mm -hmm. I can write a little nicer if I choose to. Oh my. All right, now I'm going to go back to my documents folder. When this does this, everyone. oh, there they are. Those are the ones that are signed. Okay, so one of the first little things that you can do in DocuSign to make things easier, you want to separate your executed contracts or documents from your non executed ones, the ones that just stay here, like this commercial. I don't know what I was doing here. Um, a no lead paint form doesn't matter. Over in this action section, you can add a folder to this particular group. So I'm going to call this folder executed. Let's say, because we're on a listing, I'm going to call it listing docs. All right. Then I'm going to hit create. And what it did within the, was created a folder up here, and now we have the signed documents down here. Now I want to take my signed documents and bring them into this folder. I can either take and drag and drop it so it shows the blue line, it'll pop it in there. Or I will go down if there's several documents and find all my green check mark documents. All of them. Okay, I found all the ones. And then the box that comes up up top will give me different options. I can copy the documents. I can move them, send them again for email, print them, combine them, create an envelope again, download, archive. What I want to do is move them. So I'm going to click on the move. It's going to ask where I'm moving it to. Folder in current room. And I'm going to put them in my executed listing documents. And they just now shifted and they're in this upper section. So now all my executed documents are here. So also on a listing, when you receive multiple offers, they're always going to first, when you download them, go into the regular room docs, but you can move them into another, um, another thing. So if you want to keep all the offers you were given on a listing, you can click on the add folder and write offers received. And you can create that folder. And now all the offers you received, and this does it alphabetically, by the way, so up here, um, you can put all the offers received into this particular folder. And then once you get your executed contracts that you want for that listing, you can create a separate folder saying accepted offer and put the accepted offer, the accepted lead paint and pre-approval also in that folder. Now, however, when you do this, I am mean, going to go to command. I do want to show you this. 
Oh, look, me and Amanda both have our stuff there. Oh no. Bear with me. I don't know if I got that right. First try. Um, we have lots of passwords. We know this. Go to an opportunity quickly, slowly. Okay. That command is a little slow this morning. And I get impatient very easily sometimes. There we go. All opportunities. Um, oh, I have one for more open already. That's fabulous. Let's see if I have one here. I just want to see something. When you go to your documents and you need to upload them, this is taking forever. It asks you where you're attaching documents from. You're going to attach it from DocuSign, but then you have a folder in your room. You can choose which folder those particular documents are so you know where to sync it from. If you choose Room Docs and you move them into the executed document folder, you're not going to find them. You have to choose the executed document. But this particular listing I had, I had stuff for 2021 when it was listed, and then we had relisted it in 2022. So I just created a separate folder within the room. So again, on the listing, you don't need to create a separate opportunity for the new listing if it's something that came off the market and comes back on about six months later. All you have to do is just create a new folder in your room and stick those documents in there. There's no need to create a new opportunity. There's no need for any of that. You'll have all your main documents to begin with, your client's information's in here. This stuff is all pre-filled for you. You'll just have to do a new listing agreement, add that in, and send it for signature. And then in, in command, you can come back over, and over here, you can add a version. And then all the new listing documents would go into that new version, where you have my original listed, and then I have my March 2022. So those are little things that you can do there. You can also archive documents if you don't need something anymore. So um, if you need the lead paint, you can either come up to the trash can. Oh, what just happened there? That was weird. Trash can and delete it. You can still have it back in the room if it's need be later on. Or you're going to go to this and you're going to archive it. You're going to hit archive, and it's just going to go into this hidden section. So when you're up here and you're looking at your... Underneath the documents here, you have document folder. You can search within the folder. You can sort it by A to Z, active documents, all documents, archived documents, and it sits there. And if you need to pull it back out, you'll hit the check mark on top and you hit on archive and it populates it back to the room for you. Always good to archive documents that you're not using anymore that you don't need. You can just kind of hide them. I do that particularly. With. Oh, and you have to make sure that you choose active documents. Let's just say you archive something and you were in the archive folder and you went out of this room and into another room. It's going to stay on the archive folder. So you must change it back and then you're going to panic because you can't find any of your documents. Um, I did that once and Amanda was like, are you still in the archive folder? I was like, oh, didn't realize that. One thing I tend to archive a lot of the certifications, you don't really need to look at them. You can archive them. If a lender asks for it, you can go back, but it's out of my view, out of my face. I don't need to see this particular document. Um, that's a good one. Let's just say you're on a listing and you're lead paint right here. Lead paint disclosure. You are the listing agent. And whether it's a landlord, whether it's uh, a sale, it doesn't matter, but you have the other side of the transaction. You don't need to download your lead paint form and re-upload it into the other room. Once the other room is established, you can click on the current lead paint that's actually signed. You come up to the top and you'll hit copy and it asks you where you want to copy this document to. So you can choose an active room. I'm going to find a buyer. Okay, cool. I have a buyer room that's open. I'm going to take this lead paint that was already signed and I'm talking to a copy of it into my buyer's room already for me. So you don't have to bring download uh, like you would from the MLS normally. So now if I were to go to that buyer room, which is this one, and I go into my document, I will see, where is it? When I find it, that would be even better. There it is. 
It shows in the PDF in here. It's right there. That's the document I just brought in. And it's also dated with today's date. So I know that it was definitely from today. So that's in here, which makes things easier. Uh, is this is an offer? So now we're in a buyer room. Buyers, again, you're writing numerous offers. You do not need to create a new opportunity and a new room for every time that you write an offer. That is a waste of your time. Your people only need to sign the CIS, the dual, the wire once. So there's no need for you to resend everything. All you have to do is, again, either archive the documents that are an offer, a lead paint that's not being um, signed, or you can create a folder and call it 123 Main Street, not accepted, and take the AFBA, the contract, any addendum that was with it, and take them and move them up in there. And then the original offer that you wrote right here still exists. And you'll just go back to your details page, edit the information for the location you're buying, your seller's information, you know, all of that. Their name and stuff stays the same, which makes things a little easier. You can also combine documents once they're signed to send for signature. That's a good thing. I'm going to uncheck. I don't know why I have the oh, I was showing somebody something. Um, again, I'm just sending this for fun, for signature. I'm going to take some things just to make my life a little easier. I don't know. I hate when you do that. Then I'm checked everything on you. Okay, perfect example. I don't need these listing paperwork in here. I must have been showing somebody something. So I'm going to click on the two of them and I'm going to trash them. I don't need them in here. I, I just deleted them. They're out of my view. Um, so now I'm going to click on, no, not the CIS. Things that are easy that the agent signs or whatever. Actually, I'm going to click on. I'm going to actually click on sled paint for fun. I'm going to click the contract and I'm just going to swap them in for signature. Um, buyer agent. I don't think, yeah, we're just going to stick to buyer agent to make it a little faster for these purposes. I'm going to show you how to combine documents once they're signed, which is really great on the, on the buy side, combining documents, because then this way you can combine the pre-approval that you're having here your addendums, your contract, once they're all signed, make them one file and then send them to the listing agent if you want. So this way they make sure everything is signed. I'm in here with the buyer's agent, fabulous. So I need to change that email. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna add two buyers in here. I'm gonna trash this for a second. I'm gonna hit discard. Or you're going to help me out okay. with signing things as usual. I'm going to go, I'm going to do so two different things. I'm going to go to my details page really fast and I'm going to edit the people that are in here for signing for signatures. Listing agent, listing agent, fire one. Where am I going there? A little too fast. Okay, got emails in there. Fire two. Now, I know you're in here because I've sent stuff to you before. Mm -hmm. My address book, I've sent stuff to Bauer before, so she's in here. All right, all right, and I'm gonna hit save. I just wanted to do that to add it in. So now, we'll show a couple of things. I'm gonna click on the lead paint that I brought in and I'm gonna click on the contract. And that's what I'm gonna send for signature to two buyers. Buyer one. Now, see the order that I'm clicking it on? I wound up clicking buyer agent one, then buyer one and buyer two. Because I clicked on it in that order, that's going to be the signature order that I get sent out. So what happens once this goes, it would show that the buyer's agent is sent signature once, which means the buyer agent needs to sign it. Once the buyer agent signs it, then buyer one will get an email. Once buyer one signs it, buyer two gets the email. You can remove your signing order. See, look, fire, fire one, two. 
If you want your buyers to sign at first, you can just either make sure you choose buyer one, buyer two, and then yourself or sellers. It doesn't matter whatever side of the transactions you're on. Actually, for listings, it should always be the seller signing at first, then you, then the broker. The broker gets it last to sign it to make sure all the documents are proper. But you can also change the number, the signing order, one, two, three. It doesn't really matter. You can change this number order. Um, apparently, I made, how did that get to number three? I don't really know. Uh, but anyway, so now I'm going to hit next. All my pre-tagged rules are going to populate for me, except for that lead paint form. I have to add signatures to that. So this is all in here. I don't care that this is not filled out. This is not the point right now. Um, you can make edits, though, in here now. So if I want, I forgot to add a number as I'm going through the review. When I click on the text box, I can come over here. And I'm just writing $500,000 there, and it'll populate, which is nice. So you can make the edits if you see some things off. But I'm just going to scroll down quickly to the lead paint form when I find it. We're almost there. Okay. So now I need to add the initials. I'm going to go over here. That's me as the agent. Okay. So this is buyer one. Now I'm not paying attention and I do this and I do this. And I go and I add the signature, date, and now I go back to myself and I go here. I'm not paying attention to what I think. This happens if you're not paying attention to what you're doing. And then you start adding, um, lock up here. Why is that up there? Drag that down. And then I went, oh no, I just added myself in the buyer's spot to sign up when it was supposed to be the other buyer signing something. All I have to do is highlight those two. This little thingy. Oh, you know, I don't know how to get rid of it. Um, go over to the right where it says recipients, do a drop down, and choose the correct buyer it's supposed to go to. And now it automatically change the signature, but you have to make sure that you still change it over here to make sure everything is right. Click on the initials, initial, initial, choose the checkbox, come to the right. Scroll down where it says check box values and click on it. It'll check the box off for you before you send it. I added the date marks. You know, we're just going to pretend these forms are filled out the way they should be filled out. What else can you do here? Oh, another fun thing to do. Say a name has to go on a document. If you drag and drop the name here, your name will automatically imprint onto the document for you. So if you have a document that's uploaded uh, an REO property and you've gone online and you have to fill out a specific form and need their name and their signature, you don't have to type their full name. You can drag and drop their name right over to whatever line that requires the name to go on it. It will imprint it for you. It makes things so much easier. It also does that with the email. I'm just tossing stuff on here. I'll show you when it's all signed. Um, I don't think there's a company name next to her. Payment item, I don't know. Some of these we don't need. Again, over here, random text checks boxes, things like that. I'm going to hit send on this. And now I'm going to start signing documents. They're not going to get it right away. I have to sign first. Okay, I got to figure out which email that went to before I can sign anything. Two documents. See, Mary, you're going to get last, I think. You know, I going to uh... No, I signed one. Now, an email was generated to my other email to sign. You can totally remove that too. You don't have to send it out like that. On the listing side, you should, though. Finish. 
You should be up in a few seconds. Hmm? You got it now? Okay. No, that's all sign. So when I go in here and I look at this, I will see that the agent signed it, that buyer one signed it. And if I go to view envelope history, it'll tell me. Now I reviewed it. So if you have a client that tells you they didn't see it, come in and check their history because sometimes they have opened it and viewed it and they're just lying to you. Um, you know, they do that. Or they didn't really sign it. They didn't hit the finish button. They might have done something, you know, they didn't mean to do. Go to. You done yet? Yes. Oh, okay. Cool. It's not. She's done. Cool. So now I'm going to show you how to combine documents. So I'm going to go down and find the contract that was signed and the lead paint that was signed. I'm going to come up top and I'm going to look for the one that says combine, which is this one. I can hit combine. So this is an offer. You can, number one, drag and drop the order you want to go to. So if you have your pre-approval in here, the lead paint, uh, again, any addendums that might have needed to be signed, you can put them in here and put it in an order of, here's the pre-approval, here's the contract, here are the addendums that were signed, all the way down. Sometimes this is a good thing because there's many times where you send out individually all the documents, and an addendum doesn't get signed by the seller. Is if it's all in here, then the agents, when they go through, they're gonna see what needs to be signed by the seller and get it signed, and then you know everything's downloaded. So then you can just call this whatever you want, offer one, two, three, Main Street. You hit save. It keeps the original ones that were signed separately. And then you just gotta go find where you named it in your folder here. Where'd it go? Oh, it's down on the bottom. So it saves as a PDF. Then you can right click on the document, hit download, and you'll download it right to your computer. You can archive it. But now you want to take, say, all of this and move it. Did I create a folder? I didn't create a folder. Add folder. I'm going to call this one, two, three, Main Street. I'm going to create. Now I'm going to come down to find the original contract that was signed. The left paint. No, we all do it. The original lead paint there, the one. But I did it again. Uh, the lead paint that was signed, the contract that was signed, and the offer. I'm going to come back up top. I'm going to hit move folder in room 123 Main Street. And I'm just going to move all those documents out of my way. And now that offer is sitting up here in this folder. So this way it's easy to retrieve. Because it's happened before where an agent's come back to me and said, hey, that offer that we put a house on two weeks ago, the agent came back to me because the deal fell through. And now I can find this a lot easier because I put it in the 123 Main Street folder. And we just might have to resend it for signature or we can take it, you know, because they might they might have adjusted those some new negotiations on a price or whatever. Or, or any other terms, and then we can just find it much easier and um, bring it back over. Your commission statements in here. Like I said, the certification belongs to that, so I can take the certification, drag it, that little blue box pops up, and that's the certification for this particular transaction here. I think of what else little fun things you can do in um, DocuSign. Always fill out your details page really the biggest thing. A lot of it deep populates onto the contracts for you. Always make sure that the location is in here. Your seller's first name, last name, their current address. Again, seller choose first and last name. Don't put the address in there. That's a waste of time. It's not going to populate on a form. The listing agent's full information. And again, if it's a client that you work with consistently, like a, a seller, when I hit this edit form, especially if it's a fix or flip, if I click on the little person here, it brings up the contacts or an address book. 
I will click on address book. This is your personal address book. So this is everybody that you have sent documents to for signature that are in here. So if you have a fixer flipper, again, which is also tends to be a, a, your buyer and your landlord or your seller, all you have to do is come in here because if you've done it the first time around and you find them and their name pops up, apparently I had a name trimmer in here the one day. Um, I'll do it in that class. But so then I can just click on their name. Only their name and their email will populate for you. It doesn't populate everything, but it is in there for you with their information to make it a little bit easier. I don't know how to adjust your address book any further than that. That's something I should try to learn. But again, it'll populate all the information. There for at least their, their name and their email into the form for you. So if you have to adjust their, their address, you can adjust their address and where you can actually adjust their address, or, um, just their address. What else are things that you guys done in DocuSign that you didn't know about? If any, what, is there anything that you would like to do in DocuSign that you don't really think you can do in DocuSign? Well, I didn't know you could do documents. documents. absolutely. I've been using that stupid PDF version. Oh, PDF version. No, combining documents is helpful because a lot of times on the you're on the buy side, and especially when there's highest and best, the agent calls for you to have all the documents into one file. So combining them works really, really well. And then you just rename it and do that and just send it out for signature. I mean, for um, once it's done, send it out the sending out the offer. I'm trying to think of what else fun little thing that you can do in here. I'm having my own little brain part at the moment with documents. I'm actually gonna come back here. One of my opportunities, me uh, here. I want to find the one that I just did. I did this room that I was just in. I clearly have a lot of random opportunities. It's got to be one of the most recent ones. Fire. Let's see if it's this one. Okay, I want to see if this is the room that's associated, the opportunity that's associated with that room. And I'll find out in a few seconds. Yep, it is. One, two, three, Main Street. So when I have to put like the under contract docs in, I have to make sure I would select one, two, three, Main Street. Otherwise, I'm not going to find them. And here is the contract signed. Here is the, and it's only going to show the, the, the files in that room too, which is nice, or in that folder. So you're not searching through all the other documents. So it's just those particular documents that you can just come back over and sync right in for yourselves. I need to see, I'm gonna wind up seeing that over an hour and I'm gonna hit remove at the moment just because that's gonna drive me nuts for compliance when I see something's open. That doesn't need to be open. This is how you remove a document before you submit to the office. Does anything, anybody in Zoom land have other things that you wish you could do in DocuSign? Or don't, yeah. Questions? So why sometimes, I love the when you mentioned about how to uh, delete something from the domain, no idea what that was. Especially for rental, it's good because you delete the address and then you put a new one in case you need to plan. Oh, so an application. Okay. First off, with a rental, when you're sending out an application, I always do not put, because the first time you're working with the renter, I leave the address off and I will input it after they've signed. So this way that application can be reused consistently without an address on it. Or if you if they want the address on it, you just take the one that's there, put it back in for signature, and put a text box and write it yourself. But I'll leave it blank. I always send the CIS the dual, the wire, the application without an address first. Otherwise, the stupid address is on there. And then you're constantly putting an address. Up. Most agents will take it without the address because you really should be doing all of that. If, you know, while you're searching for a property, have those pieces done because once you find the property, then you have. The application and um, their driver's license, possibly their credit score, all of that should be done. So, this way, once you see a place and they say yes, you can be submitting that right off immediately to the to the other agent. So, there's no waste in time on anything. That is one thing I did learn. It's it's imperative to try to get it done with quickly. Um, 
Any other, any questions from Zoom land? Things that you want, you get frustrated because you wish you could do, but don't know how? I find my picture in the chat box. Veronica, you good over there? You good, Monica? Yes, hi, all good. <laughs> you look so stressed over there right now. <laughs> <laughs> all good. All right. Um, I'm trying to think what else. There's fun little things. It's not a lot. It's just some little things that make life easier sometimes. If you have um, a particular document, like some people have their own applications or whatever. If you go into your e-signature section, this is where you would create your own specific template for that. So some people, some people do have their own. Uh, you got it. I'm gonna close that out. That's nice. I don't need all these little prompts. Uh, so what did I just click on? So let's just say you have your own document that you like to send to your clients for signature, you would come over and create a template this way. And it would be in a different area of your DocuSign. I've had to do this for an agent that has a lease renewal form. Instead of rewriting a whole new lease, it's a one pager that they gave me. And I put in lease renewal as the name. Oh, I have to add a document. I wonder if there's anything on this here that I could use to download. I have no idea what this is, but we're going to take it for a second and add it in here. Let's see if it works. I'm just, just using this as an example. Then you hit next. Oh, it was Oscar's thing from his class. Recipient must have a name or email address or role. Oh, sorry, I have to scroll down. Add recipient. So like on the lease renewal, I needed to add four recipients to it, basically. Three, four. And I had to call the role landlord one. I'm going to copy this, go to this role. I'm going to change it to landlord two. I'm going to call this role tenant one. Copy it. Tenant two. So it's just like you see this pre-tagged roles. These are like, because sometimes people do have their own applications. It might take you a minute to do all of this, but then what you would do in your form, I know this is a big PDF of Oscar's class, um, but you would go through your form and say, okay, landlord one needs a signature here. Landlord's name has to go here. I need to write a text box here. And you would go through your actual form of how you have it laid out, like how you look at the contract itself and there's the text boxes and names. And then it would actually be tagged out to that person. I wish I had a better form on here because then I would show it to you. But like, it, so you, know, you want their landlord and then you create, you're literally creating your own form with your own tagging rules on it. And then you would go in and you would use it. And when you would use it, you would click on, I have landlord one, two, three, you know, it's only one landlord, but it's two tenants that are signing a lease renewal. And then you would just have to put their names in and it would populate everything else onto the form for you, except for any other minor information that you might have had in the text box. I, I know this is Oscar's whole thing and it's just not really something that you fill out. Um, <laughs> can you try, can I write something like, I don't know if you can add the text space for, for the receiver. What about me if I wanna add something on the document, can I? Like in a, in a regular part of the room? No, like now, before sending it out, can I also bring something like, and see the yellow box is only for the receiver. So what about me if I wanna- Oh, ask? you would have to add yourself as an agent also as a recipient. And then I can- And then it would be tagged to you. Like this would be okay. tagged strictly to landlord one So what I did with the lease renewal, I have it, I have the, the agent on there also. And I have a spot that they would have to write in for the text boxes. Like with the James Burke of lease renewal, if there was a lease, um, because they did, they had their own little quick little form filled out instead of writing an entire new lease. It's just a, what most places do. Like I know when I rent, I don't get a whole new lease. I just get a one pager that says, "This is the new lease term. It's from this date to this date. This is my new um, 
rental amount from this time to this time. And if my security deposit is going up, because it can, in the state of New Jersey, they can increase it um, by what your rent is increasing. That one and a half months, they can increase it. So they might tell me my security deposit, additional security deposit that's due at time of signing might be 60 bucks. That'll be on there. So those are like little things that would have to be on there, but it's just a one little one pager that the person has. Some people, like I said, have their own applications for their clients that they've created in Google Forms for, for rentals. So this is where you would go and you would stick this. Not many people use this, but it's easier to use the state one. It's already in there. It's got all the information you want on it, but some people do have their own little forms for certain things. Teams might have their own forms for certain things. Or I've had it where an agent, um, just gonna discard all of this. If you're working with a builder that's got a huge rental complex coming out, you might have to put your stuff in here. Actually, I just wanted to leave this. Um, and, I, and I've had to do that before. I used the whole signature section because they had their own application that I had to tag to everything to be used for people. I had to use their lease and stuff. So it was a little more time consuming. So I had to use this whole section because it was definitely different than the fun. Um, sorry, but that's that section. Otherwise you're mainly gonna do stuff in your rooms. That's where all your, your nitty gritty stuff is. Any questions? Was that helpful? Okay. I hope that was helpful for Zoomland too. Yes, I put Google Zoomland. Yeah. Anything else, guys? Wait, hold on. That it was. Thank you. You're welcome, Lauren. And I'll make sure I get the the. I know you were looking for the template stuff. I'll make sure that's up on here by end of day. All right, everyone, I hope you have a fabulous Monday. This is a long class like the other ones. And I'll see you next month for some other class that I'll teach. Bye. Thank you.